Hi everyone, welcome back to the SuperCloud 6 AI Innovators segment here. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE here in Palo Alto, California. This, this episode of SuperCloud is really focused on the innovators in AI, people making it happen, the newsmakers, the builders, the creators, the practitioners. And this segment, Alyssa Visnik, co-founder and CEO of YLabs, ylabs.ai is featured, doing some very innovative things around our favorite topic, observability for AI, governance for AI, how do you scale AI, and uh, well-funded company, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me, John. Really excited to be here. Alyssa, you guys are doing some really cool work. I want to go over real quickly what you guys do, but the, the, the ML ops market is becoming AI ops. You guys are in the middle of the gen AI wave, right on that growth curve. We covered the news of Langkit was released in 2023, open source project you guys released, really kind of creating that momentum. Um, you're former Amazonian on the ML team back in the day. So, you know, your roots are there. So as you come into this next wave, the generative AI opens up uh, massive growth as the applications are starting to come out. You're starting to see a lot more activity around setting up infrastructure, standing up applications, starting to people see some point use cases now out there, some point solutions and everyone's going there, but now you got to stand up and run stuff on it. So you have to build the infrastructure and have the operations. So here we go again. Another operational challenge, yet a huge opportunity. You guys are in the middle of it. Take us through what your vision is for, for AI and, and what y, y Labs does. Yeah, it's indeed a very, very exciting time for the entire industry and community with the excitement around Gen AI and its potential transformative nature for every enterprise. Uh, the, the operations and you know getting value out of this amazing technology is top of mind for every enterprise. So to talk about how you know the operations are transforming, I want to start with the big picture. And if we think about the enterprise AI stack and what happened in the last year with the introduction of LLMs, we can see how the AI stack is very rapidly evolving. There are a few things that are happening. The model building has completely changed. Previously, there will be a lot of resources needed to build a model. There were data science teams that were created around each particular task, personalization, marketing, et cetera. Now with foundation models and how they're becoming more and more common across different use cases, there's less building and more tuning. And the power of creating AI applications is now in the hands of any developer, it's no longer kind of closed in and within your data science or ML team. So it becomes, it's becoming a lot more accessible to build AI powered LLM powered applications. Now the deployment part, it became easier over the past few quarters, I would say, because the big cloud companies and kind of infrastructure providers um, invested an immense amount of money into making deployment as easy as possible. And there are new tools that have launched like Langchain that makes the entire application building much, much easier. However, the resulting application is incredibly complex and really hard to operate and no longer has the visibility that we uh, want to see when we're talking about you know observability for traditional applications, non-LM, non-AI applications. So it's, it's easier to build AI. The resulting applications are a lot more complex and uh, a lot less transparent. That's where we're kind of stuck right now. And the role of Y Labs here is to simplify the operation part. We believe that the main kind of blocker in wide enterprise AI adoption is an ability to standardize operations, uh, starting with observability and then going into security, which enables guardrail and then going into and simplifying debugging and gathering more data for uh, optimizing and improving the model. So YLabs kind of brings all of those activities around operating, which starts with observability, together and we, with the release of Landkit last year, uh, which has gotten amazing traction, we're doing around 30,000 downloads a month and major Fortune 500s are using Landkit in their LM applications for enabling transparency. Landkit is the starting point for that. And this year we've been expanding rapidly, introducing new products like guardrails, 
tracing of the complex LLM applications to further improve that observability and control. So I would say it's super exciting time. Enterprises, every Fortune 500 has some kind of uh, OKR to launch a Gen AI powered application on their roadmap this year or, or multiple. Operations are still hard, but with the products that we're putting forward, uh, we believe they'll become increasingly easier and the community is all kind of gathered together around making sure that LLMs can be adopted rapidly and safely, which I think is on everybody's mind. It's one of those things where the CEO or the execs, we need to get into that business immediately. We're going to be left out of the cold. We're going to be on the wrong side of history. So it's a little bit of hype there. I love that hype. However, the hype is matching with reality. You're starting to see benefits. So the question I have for you is, because I'm just curious, um, are you guys more like developer focused with the open source, growing it up, gr bottoms up? getting in with the developer teams, or are you targeting much more of an enterprise ops team? Because with, or both, because obviously with the land kit, you know, the data dogs of the worlds, you know, come in, start from the developer and go up. You know, we obviously believe that the developers will dictate the standards. So they're going to, that's important. So the question is, are you guys doing both or more leaning into the open source as kind of seed the base and organically grow the, the market? So we're doing both. And the reason for that, is that first of all, you know, the developers are dictating what gets adopted and it's very important to have open source tools to give developers the power to evaluate and decide and assess whether the tool fits their needs. However, it's equally as important to have an enterprise motion in place because when it comes to enabling observability for AI applications, the Deployment involves touching companies' most proprietary, most confidential data, which is the data that goes through the model inference through the AI inference. And in order for that process to go smoothly, we want to make sure that, you know, as we're introducing safety and control into AI applications, we're not taking safety out from, uh, you know, the, the overall kind of IT teams policies. So in order for that to go smoothly, we have to engage very closely with the security team. So that becomes an enterprise motion. Essentially, we're helping align all of the stakeholders from hands-on keyboard developers who need to evaluate the tools all the way to um, CISOs because you know security is a super top of mind topic for everyone. And now with LLM, CISOs get involved in the purchasing decision as well. So in a way, it's a, a, I would say it's a very tough job, yeah. <laughs> lots of stakeholders, yeah. but the, this is the state of where we're at right now. And I think things are evolving pretty rapidly. I do think that eventually the way the space is going to evolve is very similar to how Datadog uh, kind of took observability to market, which is through bottoms up, through standards created by practitioners and through the tools adopted first by practitioners. What's interesting about um, what you just mentioned, which I think is notable is that the highlighting that both the organic and the, the pre-existing assets that you have to touch being proprietary and sens probably sensitive data, but also strategic data, pre-existing apps, because Generate AI brings a whole nother level of scale and benefit to that. So it's not like, hey, go build an app and we'll roll it out and test it out. This is a, bring this in mainstream. So you got to kind of do both. You got to get the developers comfortable with, with the technology, but also how do you build it? So I think that speaks to the opportunity, clearly. That's why Generate AI is going to be huge. The question I have for you is, do you see this becoming a whole new infrastructure? Does AI have its own operational operating system? Is it going to be another abstraction layer? We hear neural nets, we see um, um, graph databases. You're starting to see a lot more LLMs interacting with other small language models. Some call them you know, proprietary sovereign models, whatever you want to call them. You now have model integration happening. So you're starting to see this wave of, hmm, it may look differently. So the question is, do you see that happening? And then if you do, how do you run observability on an infrastructure that's not yet defined or is, being retooled in real time? Ooh, ooh, this is a tough question. <laughs> and uh, I think it's tough, not just for me, but for our entire community to answer. You're introducing a kind of a very, or you're bubbling up a very uh, important topic, which is the infrastructure is evolving rapidly and, and it hasn't finished evolving. So it's going to be evolving this year and next year and probably a few years from now. So how do you adopt to that? I think the first thing is, 
it's too early to tell uh, whether there's going to be, you know, a completely separate kind of AI IT organization uh, that will come to exist. I'm not sure if it's smart to separate those two concerns because in the end of the day, it's all software. So my bet uh, would be that essentially the IT organization is going to evolve and everybody is going to get very AI smart. So every IT practitioner mm -hmm. uh, would be as comfortable using and operating the AI side of the technology stack as they are, you know, operating mm -hmm. containerized deployments or microservices, you know, or as, as we've been evolving through like what software means, we started with, you know, software being something that's uh, pretty static on your box under your desk to something that, you know, software is ever evolving, which is um, like what you experience with an LLM application. And we have adapted through all of the cycles of like moving to the cloud, moving to a containerized deployment. And IT got caught up and expanded their capabilities. So I don't think AI is going to introduce anything more kind of revolutionary that what have been uh, going through the IT uh, organization evolution so far. But I do think that the need to adapt for the IT organization at enterprise, they need to become very comfortable with both the tools that the AI technology is bringing into the IT infrastructure world, as well as getting comfortable with the AI technology as a whole. How do you operate? What is What are some gotchas? How is observability for AI applications different from observability for application performance monitoring, for example? Um, getting smart about that, I think is the most important thing and something that everybody should start doing yesterday. Alyssa, you know, your point about the software is key because I think that's the end game, right? It's all software. So AI will bring on new capabilities in here. So you're going to have a probably some adaptive, some smart AI. So people will be operating with humans and AI working together. I mean, that's been discussed a lot. So I think it's still an open question. We're going to keep monitoring, but I think that's the question is, what does the infrastructure look like now? That's a, that was a lead into the next question, which is observability. Because generative AI is generating new things, you see that's today with current LLMs, whether it's a hallucination or the answer is different every time. How do you, how do you log that, <laughs> the good answers in? So let's just say uh, you got prompt, prompting with responses, which we see today, and then you got reasoning, which is inference based, or kind of, kind of. Mm -hmm. so you got response from prompts and more prompts, and then you got reasoning a little bit, a little deeper thinking. As those things come together, that's going to be an observability challenge. So let's call that down the road. How do companies today start taking baby steps to start figuring out what is their observability posture? Um, is, it, is it gettable? The, are they in position? What's your vision on the roadmap of observability, knowing that if something pops out a good answer, you want to save it <laughs> or log it? And then did it happen again? So this is a, like an open question because like I can see a lot of complexity there. Yes, and uh, this is exactly the type of challenge that we're tackling. So first, I'm going to talk a little bit more abstractly from you know what organizations are doing today when it comes to getting smart about observability for LLM applications and AI, Gen AI applications in general. So there are kind of two angles to it. Uh, there's the quality angle, right? the user sends a prompt, the, uh, the application comes back with a response, is this a good response or not? How do you decide that? Is this a response that you can even return back to the user? Because if we're talking about highly regulated industries, for example, you know, uh, um, you cannot, your chatbot cannot return an answer to uh, the question about any kind of legal advice, medical advice, marriage advice, you know, you don't want to get into any kind of uh, legal, a uh, gray area there. So how do you control what your LLM can respond? What kind of questions can the LLM respond to? And how do you control the quality? That's like one area of operations that I think enterprises are grappling with. The, the second area is security. So LLMs and Gen AI applications open up a whole new set of security challenges that we haven't solved before. And how do you, those include kind of how you, how do you identify prompt injections, jailbreaks, or any kind of adversarial 
engagement from the user side with your LLM application. And there, I would say the OWASP top 10 for large language models has been kind of leading the way with the recommendations of, of what can be tracked. So given these two areas, what, what do organizations practically do today? I would say the focus right now is figuring out what to measure and how to measure it consistently. So if we're talking about quality and kind of performance of the LLMs, oftentimes enterprises want to measure the chance of hallucinations, uh, the relevance of the responses to the prompts, uh, particular topics that are discussed within both the prompts and the responses from LLMs, measuring that um, and tracking that over time. So with Y Labs, one of the things we do is we have what's called a guardrail, which allows organizations to define policies and then track prompts and responses with respect to those defined policies. Practically what it does, I'll give you kind of a very, very simple example. If there is a given a prompt, um, let's let's say we're talking about topics. Given a prompt, we would extract the types of topics that are covered in the prompt. So the interesting topics could be like a legal conversation, for example, or health advice conversation, or discount conversation, which is you know top of mind for airlines lately. Uh, so we would extract that information that would essentially decorate or label the prompt with the with these tags, policy tags, and we'll do the same thing for responses. So now our users have a set of prompts, basically blobs of text and responses, blobs of text, which are a lot more consumable by observability analytics because they're labeled with tags that describe whether they contain information that is uh, prohibited by the policies or contain the information that the operational team wants to watch. And that turns them into essentially a really big database that you can then mine for tags and do various types of alerts and analytics, and then use that information to further improve your customer experience. That's the focus that we have today at YLabs with some of the new tools that we're bringing to market. Well, I really appreciate your time. I know you're busy running a company, building a company. Um, the industry needs a platform agnostic AI monitoring solution that can run across multiple clouds, edge, no matter where the models are. And I think that's going to be um, key, but also models start to work with each other. And I really appreciate you taking the time. The last minute we have, put a plug in for the company. What are you guys doing now? You're hiring, um, talk about the funding, give a quick commercial for uh, Y Labs. Absolutely. So Y Labs is growing continuously. Uh, one of the big focus, uh, hiring focus areas is go-to-market team. Uh, we're always looking for amazing solutions architects and salespeople. Uh, if you have experience with AI, that's, you know, an extra gold star on our side. And most importantly, you know, we are a open source first standard creating company. So the feedback from the community on the standards that we have for Y logs being the standard for traditional uh, predictive ML and LangKit being the standard for generative applications. Having feedback on that, having community engagement on that is the way we grow and bring further benefits, not just to the enterprises that are buying Y labs, but to the entire community. So would love community engagement for, on that and discussions on how we take the operations and observability to the next level, the one that has a lot of generative AI applications. Alyssa, thank you for being part of theCUBE's AI Innovators show. We appreciate uh, the work that you do and uh, it's going to be evolving fast. <laughs> so we need to get that observability in there in this generative AI market is going to be going to be hot. So thanks for taking the time. Excellent, thank you so much. Okay, we'll be more back with more SuperCloud 6 coverage here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, your host, stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you.